Hey future helicopter pilots, welcome to this crucial chapter in your journey to mastering the skies. Jason Shepard here from Mizoroa.com. And today we're diving deep into a topic that's absolutely fundamental to helicopter flight. Today, we're talking about the heart of your helicopter, the rotor system. It's more than just a collection of parts. It's the very essence of what makes a helicopter unique. It's not just spinning blades, it's the key to how your aircraft flies and responds. It dictates stability, maneuverability, and even how the helicopter handles in challenging conditions. Mastering your rotor system isn't just for passing a check ride, it's about flying safely and confidently every time. It's about developing an intuitive understanding of how your helicopter behaves. Every helicopter feels different and much of that comes down to its rotor system. The design, the number of blades, the way they articulate, all these factors contribute to the unique handling characteristics of each helicopter. Knowing your rotor type helps you predict how your aircraft will react in wind, during maneuvers or in emergencies. Understanding how the rotor system behaves in different scenarios is paramount for safe and effective flight. When you understand how the blades work, you stop just flying. You start working with the machine. You anticipate its needs, you feel its responses, and you become one with the aircraft. Think of it like driving a sports car versus a truck each has its own strengths and quirks. You wouldn't drive them the same way, would you? A rigid rotor system feels ultra-responsive while a semi-rigid system requires you to think ahead. It demands a more deliberate and anticipatory approach to flight. This knowledge is the foundation of all your piloting skills. It's the bedrock upon which you'll build your expertise and confidence as a helicopter pilot. Respect the forces at play above your head those blades are doing serious work. They're battling gravity, wind resistance and inertia, all while providing the lift and control you need to fly. By learning how the system manages lift and stress you learn to respect its limits. You'll understand when to push the envelope and more importantly, when to hold back. That respect keeps you and your passengers safe because at the end of the day, safety is always the top priority. So, let's break down these systems and build your foundation as a great pilot. We'll explore the different types of rotor systems, their components, and how they interact to create flight. A good pilot flies the aircraft. A great pilot understands it. They know the ins and outs of their machine, and they use that knowledge to fly with precision and confidence. Let's get started. Let's unlock the secrets of the rotor system and elevate your piloting skills to the next level. Ever wondered how the subtle movements you make in the cockpit translate into the powerful actions of those massive rotor blades above? It's a fascinating dance of mechanics and aerodynamics, a carefully orchestrated system that allows you to command this incredible machine. The secret lies in understanding the cyclic and collective controls, the primary tools you use to manipulate the helicopter's flight path. These controls, though seemingly simple, are connected to a complex network of mechanical components that ultimately govern the angle and pitch of the rotor blades. The cyclic, that control stick nestled comfortably between your knees, is your primary means of controlling the helicopter's direction. Think of it as your steering wheel in the sky. By gently nudging the cyclic forward, you command the helicopter to move forward. Pulling it back, you initiate backward movement. Similarly, pushing the cyclic to the left or right causes the helicopter to bank and move laterally in those directions. It's all about subtle adjustments and precise coordination. Now let's turn our attention to the collective, the lever positioned conveniently by your side. This control governs the overall lift produced by the rotor system, directly influencing your altitude. When you pull up on the collective, you're essentially increasing the pitch of all the rotor blades simultaneously, generating more lift and causing the helicopter to climb. Conversely, pushing down on the collective decreases the blade pitch, reducing lift and initiating a descent. But how do these simple movements translate into such complex changes in the rotor system? The answer lies in a network of precisely engineered rods and linkages. Your control inputs travel through these mechanical pathways, ultimately converging at the swash plate, a critical component in the helicopter's control system. The swash plate is the unsung hero, the mechanical heart that orchestrates the complex movements of the rotor blades. This ingenious device is comprised of two key parts, each playing a vital role in translating your commands. First we have the stationary swash plate, which is directly connected to your cyclic and collective controls. Then there's the rotating swash plate, which, as the name suggests, spins in unison with the rotor blades. When you pull up on the collective, the stationary swash plate responds by lifting the entire swash plate assembly, 
which in turn increases the pitch of all the rotor blades equally, generating more lift and causing the helicopter to climb skyward. Lowering the collective initiates the opposite effect, decreasing blade pitch, reducing lift, and gently guiding you back towards the ground. The cyclic, on the other hand, controls direction by tilting the swashplate. This tilting action doesn't move the swashplate up or down but rather angles it in the direction you intend to travel. As the swashplate tilts in response to your cyclic input, the pitch of each individual rotor blade changes continuously as it rotates around the rotor hub. This creates a differential in lift, with one side of the rotor disc generating more lift and the opposite side producing less. This imbalance in lift causes the entire rotor disc to tilt, effectively pulling the helicopter in the direction you've chosen with the cyclic. This intricate system allows you to achieve precise and responsive control across all axes of movement, giving you the ability to hover, maneuver, and navigate with remarkable accuracy. In essence, the swashplate acts as a translator, converting your every subtle movement into a corresponding change in the rotor system, ultimately dictating the helicopter's flight path. Mastering this intricate connection between your controls and the rotor system is absolutely key to achieving smooth, safe, and confident flying. It's not some kind of mystical force or aerial sorcery, it's simply the result of clever and sophisticated engineering. Take the time to truly understand how this system works, and you'll find yourself flying with a newfound sense of confidence and control. Think of the controls as your voice, allowing you to communicate your intentions to the helicopter. And the rotor system? Well, that's your graceful dance partner, responding in perfect harmony to your every command. Now that we've explored the fundamentals, let's delve deeper and see how different types of rotor systems handle your commands and how these variations impact the overall flight characteristics of the helicopter. Now let's look at the three main rotor system types, fully articulated, semi-rigid, and rigid. Each manages flight forces differently, with unique pros and cons. Fully articulated systems have multiple hinges, letting each blade move independently, smooth but complex. Semi-rigid systems are simpler, usually with two blades on a teetering hinge, think seesaw. Rigid systems have no hinges, blades flex to absorb forces, super responsive but can be rougher. Each design balances performance, complexity and maintenance, fully articulated smooth ride, more parts. Semi-rigid simple, light but needs careful handling. Rigid crisp control, fewer parts, but transmits more vibration. Understanding these types helps you predict how your helicopter will fly and what to watch for. Let's dive deeper into each system. The fully articulated rotor system is the classic sophisticated design. Each blade can flap, lead lag and feather independently, thanks to multiple hinges. This makes for a smooth, stable ride, ideal for larger multi-bladed helicopters like the Black Hawk. The big advantage? Vibration is absorbed by the blades, not the cabin. The downside, more moving parts mean more maintenance and higher costs. It's perfect for heavy loads and stable platforms, but you pay for that comfort and upkeep. For students, it feels forgiving and smooth, with positive but not twitchy controls. If you're flying a fully articulated system, enjoy the ride. But respect the maintenance checklist, it's a trusted design for demanding missions. The semi-rigid or teetering rotor system is all about simplicity. Usually two blades, rigidly connected, rocking on a single hinge like a playground seesaw. As one blade flaps up, the other flaps down, balancing lift. Fewer parts mean lighter weight, lower cost, and easier maintenance great for training helicopters like the Bell Huey or Robinson R-22. The catch? No lead lag hinges, so you must avoid abrupt maneuvers and low-G situations to prevent mast bumping. It's responsive but demands a gentle touch and constant positive G-loading. Respect its limits and it's a reliable, efficient system. Perfect for learning but always fly it with care. The rigid rotor system is the modern marvel no hinges, just flexible blades. All movement comes from the blades flexing thanks to advanced composites. The result? Instant, crisp control ideal for high-performance and aerobatic helicopters like the Bolkow Bow 105. The trade-off more vibration reaches the cabin and the blades are expensive to make. It's agile and precise, but less forgiving every input counts. You may not train in one, but understanding this system rounds out your rotorcraft knowledge. Rigid systems reward skill and precision. They're the cutting edge of helicopter design. To truly master helicopter rotor systems, we need to delve into the fundamental movements that govern their operation. It's essential to know the three key blade movements, 
the core principles that dictate how a helicopter generates lift and maintains stability. First, feathering, then flapping, and finally, lead lag. Feathering, all systems do this. Blades rotate on their axis, changing their angle of attack to change pitch, directly controlling lift and thrust. Flapping blades move up and down, dynamically adjusting their vertical position to balance lift differences between the advancing and retreating sides of the rotor disc. Fully articulated systems use flapping hinges, allowing for free vertical movement, semi-rigid systems teeter, rocking around a central mast, while rigid systems flex, bending along their length. Lead lag blades move forward and back horizontally, in the plane of rotation, within the rotor disc. This movement is crucial to relieve stress caused by the uneven forces acting on the blades. Fully articulated systems incorporate lead lag hinges, which permit this horizontal movement. Whereas semi-rigid and rigid systems absorb these forces through controlled flex, bending and twisting to dissipate energy. These intricate movements work in harmony to keep your helicopter stable and responsive, even during complex maneuvers. Each system manages these movements differently, with unique design characteristics, ultimately shaping how your aircraft feels and flies, and how it responds to your commands. A thorough understanding of these basics will allow you to anticipate your helicopter's behavior in various flight conditions. It's the secret to smooth, safe, and confident flight. Now, let's transition to a critical safety issue that every helicopter pilot must be aware of. Mast bumping. Mast bumping is a serious danger in semi-rigid rotor systems. It happens when the rotor hub strikes the mast, usually after excessive flapping from a low G condition. A sudden forward cyclic push can unload the rotor, letting the fuselage tilt dangerously. If you then make abrupt corrections, the hub can hit the mast. Often catastrophic, the rule, always maintain positive Gs and avoid abrupt large cyclic movements. Recovery from low G? Gently apply aft cyclic to reload the disc, then correct roll. Respect this limit, and you'll keep yourself and your helicopter safe. Let's wrap up. Your rotor system shapes every aspect of your flight. Fully articulated, smooth, stable, but complex. Semi-rigid, simple, responsive, but needs careful handling. Rigid, agile, precise, but less forgiving. Know your system's strengths and limits. It's the foundation of safe flying. Safety means knowing danger zones. Mast bumping for semi-rigid, maintenance for articulated. Maintenance matters, more parts mean more checks. Read your POH, ask questions and understand what you see during pre-flight. Feel how your helicopter responds and work with it, not against it. A great pilot forms a partnership with their machine. By truly understanding your rotor system, you'll fly safer and smarter. Keep learning, keep flying, and always respect what's spinning above your head. Fly safe.